construction industry has always had the challenge of dealing with prototypes, building one-off buildings, buildings that have never been built before. You know, take the Ship Street Centre, which was fitted out with inside an old Victorian dry goods store. Uh, never ever been done before. So we always face with the challenges of something that is novel. But now, with the increasing pace of technology and data management, we now have the capability to design buildings in three dimensions and therefore produce a virtual prototype rather than going straight to site on the basis of everything being in two dimensions. So we can kind of improve the whole design and construction process and that helps to de-risk it uh, through improved visualisation for clients and end users and designers so that everyone can visualise the product before it gets delivered. Improved ability for designers to resolve design coordination issues. Time and cost can be associated to components within the model, giving better forecasting for planning um, in terms of program and cost plans. And providing contractors with the ability to actually simulate the construction process uh, and site logistics. These are some images we've got, the, the, quite a few of you would have been to Manchester, we've got a couple of buildings together which are the, uh, the, the library and the town hall extension, both built in the 30s, they were both designed by Vincent Harris, he uh, designed them about the same time but the library which is the building on the left was built around 1932 and the extension was about 1937, they're both grade 2 star listed and the, uh, the council, after a lot of work, uh, decided that the best thing to do was to actually uh, refurbish the extension for its own use. The library was getting dangerous, so it had, um, had to be refurbished anyway. That's great, but where does, where does actually BIM come into, this, um, into the equation? Well, this, this slide, which hopefully quite a few of you have seen, is, is actually... I'll try and flag up the important ones today. This is important. Why is it important? Because down the left-hand side, you've got the, they are the old Reba stages, not the new one. You've got the Reba stages, and the red line is just showing you what uh, an, an assessment of, of where you can take benefit. The green line is, is a guess, at, and what it's trying to show is nothing more complicated than the real benefit is going to be beyond completion of the building. Well, thanks ever so much for that, John. Um, I think one thing that you're reinforcing there is when you start on, like any journey, you've got to have the end in mind. So with BIM, when you're starting on the BIM journey, what do you want to use the model for? And this is what we're finding through a, we have a, a got a grant through the Technology Strategy Board, and starting to write the employer's information requirements is you've got to kind of focus on what do you want to use this model for? at the end of the day, and as your, as your slides show, that the bulk of the cost of the built asset is not in the construction, it's in the operation.